welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new dye, Tiny Gift Box Skunk Add-on. This dye turns the tiny gift box into an adorable skunk, and this skunk is an addition to our entire critter family that we have for the tiny gift box, which I just adore. And so now we're gonna take a look at all of the pieces that this dye set comes with. Uh, there's a ton of pieces, and what's great about this is you can use it with the tiny gift box or without, and we're gonna be showing you that in both ways today. Now it's time to start building our cute little skunk. And you'll see that there's an oval shaped piece there. That's the backer for the behind the eyes and nose to fill those in with black cardstock. And then those little teardrop pieces, those are for behind the ears. So we die cut those out of some light pink cardstock and we're gonna layer those behind each of the ears. Next up, we're going to add some rosy cheeks to this cute little skunk. This just makes it look even more like a little cartoon. I think it's absolutely adorable. And right now we are building the skunk out of different shades of gray, black, and white cardstock, but we're gonna show you how to do it with Copic markers in just a little bit. So now we're gonna take the whole face and we're going to layer that right onto the fluffy body. And we've die cut that out of black cardstock here, but you can also do that out of white. And I'll show you how that looks in just a little bit. Then we have the cute little skunk stripe right there. We're gonna to add to his face and that's gonna be in white, of course. And then we're gonna add a cute little belly as well. And that little belly, I feel like makes the whole character. Our next step is to add the white stripe to the tail. So we're just gonna layer that right on. And now we can start to work on forming the tiny gift box. So the tiny gift box is a die that's been around for a long time. It's absolutely adorable and it works great as a cute little box. But what's really, really awesome is that you can turn this into cute little critters with add-on die sets. And of course, now we're doing our skunk since we have our awesome scent with love stamp set this time. So we went ahead and folded along all the fold lines and then we're gonna add some double-sided tape to the four tabs and then you'll peel up that liner paper and then you're just going to create the box by meeting those fold lines together and putting those tabs with the tape on the inside of the box. So we're just gonna go all the way around the box and build this cute tiny little box and then you'll see that the tab just tucks right in right there. The next thing we're gonna do is add some glue to the front of the box and we're gonna attach that adorable little skunk face and then we're gonna add some more of the details. This little stripe here, this is for the very top of the box. And you'll see that we're gonna put it on the box in this direction, but you can do it in the other direction as well, just depending on how you want your box to look. And we're gonna show you that in just a little bit too. Next, the skunk has these little feet, so we're gonna add glue to the back of those and put those along the side of the box. And you'll see just how cute that is. It just adds this beautiful little extra detail. And you could do those legs in a lighter cardstock as well if you wanted them to stick out even more. And then the next really cool thing is we're gonna add the tail. And the tail is added to the back of the box right in that little indent that's on the back of the box where you put your finger to open it up. And what's really cool about that is that you can pull the tail to be able to open the box. And now this adorable little skunk is done. I mean, isn't that so cute? He's so much fun. He'd be a perfect little treat holder to go along with a scent with love card. So it's this whole fun kind of Valentine's theme. And here is what I was telling you before about different ways that you can build the box. You can put that skunk stripe in the other direction. And for that big fluff, you can make all of that fluff white too. So if you want to kind of more of a white fluffy stripe on him, you can make that white. Or like we did it today, we did it in black. So you can play and mix and match with different ideas. Next up, we're gonna use this adorable skunk on the front of a card instead of using him on the box. And then later on, Shari's gonna show us how to make an interactive card with him too. Here, I've gone ahead and die cut the largest of the mini slimline stackables out of Bristol cardstock. And we're gonna do some ink blending on here. So we're gonna be using some Distress Oxide inks in Milled Lavender, Kitsch Flamingo, and Tattered Rose. And we're recreating a card by Grace here today. And oh my goodness, this is so gorgeous. And it might be my favorite Valentine color combo ever. So we've got this beautiful soft lavender coming in from the top and the bottom then we're going to go to this fun kind of bright flamingo pink in between and then the tattered rose is going to go in the middle now i always like to go back and forth between my colors to make sure that there's a really nice blend between the two of them so here you'll see we'll add the tattered rose and then we'll go back to the kitsch flamingo to blend that all in and then back to the lavender to blend that in now that our ink blending is done we're going to do some stenciling using the brand new lots of hearts background stencil and i'm obsessed 
obsessed with this stencil. Of course, it's perfect for Valentine's, but I think I'm going to use it on every card ever from now on. It's just such a fun little detail. And so we're going to be using some Lawn Fawn inks over top of the Distress Oxides, which is really cool. And we're starting off with Fresh Lavender. And I really wanted those hearts to really stick out over top of that soft kind of pastel chalky look of the Distress Oxides. So we're that's why we're using some of the Lawn Fawn inks here. And then here we have some bubble gum, which we're then going to blend down into that pink area and then we're going to lift up the stencil now and we'll see that beautiful magic and this is a two-part stencil it actually looks really great with just one of the stencils but i really wanted lots of hearts so we're using the second stencil and i'm going to line that up exactly where it goes i'm just kind of looking through to see where i need to fill these guys in and we're going to do the same thing the purple the lavender on the top and the bottom and then our bubblegum ink in the middle and so i'm just going to blend that down and i'm letting the colors overlap between the pink and the purple so that the gradient appears on the hearts as well as the background and now you can see that this whole background is done isn't that so pretty oh i love it so much really love using these hearts in this tone on tone way i just think it makes just the most beautiful background now we're going to set that aside to dry and now we're going to work on our skunk so i've gone ahead and die cut those same pieces that we use for the box but now we're going to use him on a card front and i went ahead and die cut them all out of white cardstock because we're going to be using our copic markers to add color and the fun thing about using markers or inks for these pieces is that it's going to give them a really dynamic gradient look versus the solid color cardstock now, if you wanted to make something a little bit less complicated, but still have a gradient look, you could use colored cardstock and just ink blend on it a little bit and get a really similar to look to these markers here. Now I'm using the neutral markers here and I'm going all the way down from N10 all the way down to N4. So I'm using the 10, 8, 6, 4 to create this character. And so I'm just kind of going back and forth and I'll lay the pieces on top of each other to see how it's going to look. I'll start with a darker edge on the outside of his face and then just kind of blend it into light and then he was a little bit too light so I'm adding a little bit more of a dark marker along the edge and then blending that out into the center and this is really fun and really easy to do because you can be a bit messy with the markers because it only adds more texture to this cute little skunk now for those behind the ear pieces and the cheeks I used a really light pink marker for those I'm going to add some liquid glue to the back of his face and we're going to layer those teardrop shaped pieces behind his ears and we're going to layer a piece cut out of black cardstock that oval shaped piece behind the eyes and the nose to add the detail to that area too Next up, we'll give him some rosy cheeks, and now we're gonna start building the skunk in a different way than we did on the box. So I'm gonna add some tape runner to the back of the face, and we're actually going to layer the legs behind the face because he's gonna be on the front of a card instead of this whole three-dimensional box. So I'm layering those two legs right behind his face and kind of adding a little bit of an angle so he kind of looks like he's kind of sitting at a funny angle. Then we're gonna add that white stripe to the top of his face, and then we're gonna do a kind of fun detail, and that is adding another one of those white stripes behind just to give him even more of a fluffy stripe and then we can layer that whole thing on the main fluff if that makes sense so you'll see that we've added an extra one of those little white nose pieces in the background just to add even more of a white stripe to this skunk we're going to layer the white stripe onto the tail and then we can layer the tail right behind that kind of big fluffy piece. And so now we've got this adorable little skunk that looks like the box, but now he's much more two dimensional. I'm going to take a white gel pen and add some fun details to the sky. And this is really going to help all of these details pop on the skunk because it is a lot of shades of gray. And by adding those little white gel pen lines, you can see already that he's almost becoming three dimensional looking. And all of the little details and coloring that we added is really popping by doing this. Last step for the skunk is to add that cute little white belly at the bottom and how this little skunk is done and you can see just how adorable he is. I love how he turned out. I cannot wait to make all of the critters using Copic markers because he just has so much fun dimension. And now we're going to start creating our card. So here is the giant XOXO die and I've die cut that out of white cardstock and out of some pixie dust sparkle cardstock. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut this die apart. So you'll see they connect right at the O and the X there and I'm just going to go right along the edge of the O and cut the two apart so that we're going to be able to do kind of a fun stack detail. And we'll do this for both the white piece and the pixie dust piece. And here you can see I'm just going in and just cleaning up the edges so it looks really nice. 
And then once we have these done, we're gonna be layering these pieces together. So I'm gonna add some liquid glue with the glue tube to the back of the white piece. And we're gonna layer it on the glitter one and create almost like a drop shadow look. So I'm layering it, but it's a little bit shifted to the right so that it looks like there's this fun glittery drop shadow. To finish up our sentiment, we're gonna be using the Scent With Love add-on stamp set, and we're gonna do the You Are Stinkin' Sweet sentiment, and we're gonna heat emboss that on white on a wavy banner that we cut out of guava cardstock. And so I'm taking that stamp and just curving it onto my block so that it matches the curve of that die cut. We're gonna add some anti-static powder tool so that that way our white heat embossing powder will only stick to this clear embossing ink that we're stamping in. Then we can sprinkle on some of that white heat embossing powder, and then we'll heat it up with the heat tool and we'll have a nice bright white shiny sentiment. Next up we're going to take out the mini slimline dies again and this time we're going to use the largest one and the large mini slimline dies. So that way we're going to be layering these two pieces together. And so I die cut that out of white cardstock. We'll add some tape runner to that background that we stenciled earlier and then we're going to layer that on there and it has that nice bright white border and the double stitching which looks so pretty. And now we can start to build our card. So I'm gonna add some tape runner to the back of the two XOXOs and the back of the sentiment that we heat embossed on the wavy banner. And then we're gonna add some foam squares to that adorable skunk and we're gonna layer him so that he's standing on that wavy banner. One last little detail, we're gonna take the hearts dies from the hearts and dies skinny tag. I love using these as a little confetti. We're gonna take three of those sizes and die cut them from white cardstock and we're gonna sprinkle them around this cute little skunk. And so I'm gonna do the three different sizes so that it's kind of like a fun little gradient of hearts and just add some tape runner or liquid glue behind those and just layer those. And I just think that looks so cute with those little hearts just floating around this skunk. And then our last step is going to be to create the card base. And from the mini slimline cards, all you need to do is take a six inch by six inch white piece of cardstock or any color of cardstock really, and you're gonna score at three and fold in half. And that's gonna be the perfect mini slimline card base. We'll add some tape runner to that. And then we're gonna layer that whole panel that we've been working on right on top. And now our adorable card is finished. And I love that these tiny gift box critters can all be used either on the box or on a card front like this. I love that there's two ways to use them. Next up, Shari is going to be creating an interactive pull tab card with this cute skunk. So take it away, Shari. For my card today, I'm using the new skunk add-on to the tiny gift box, but I am going to be making a card. So I've gone ahead and cut out my little pieces for my skunk. I've used some narwhal cardstock for his face. I'm using some white for that stripe on the top of his head and some white for his little belly here. And then I've cut that background piece of his fur from some black cardstock. And I've also cut these little pieces that I'm going to add to the back of his ears out of some ballet slipper cardstock. So these just layer behind the ears and fill in those cut openings with pink if you like it. You could also just layer it onto that black and you would just get black in the center of the ears. And then I'm just gonna put this onto that black furry piece that's cut from some black licorice cardstock. And then for the tail, there's two pieces that you layer together. So I've got that little white stripe I'm gonna layer on the tail. And then I'll just add this to the back of my skunk. Since it's not a box, I'm just gonna add it to the back of his head so that it sticks up like his tail sticking up behind him. Now that my little skunk is assembled, I can start some work on the background in my little scene that he's gonna be in. So I've cut a stitched rectangle from some white cardstock, and I'm using the cloudy stencil to create a cloudy sky. So I'm using some tumbled glass distress ink, and I'm just inking on the edge of that cloudy stencil so I get that nice puffy cloud look. Then I'll pull it down and rotate it so I get some different clouds. I decided to switch over to my Make Art Station so I could use my magnets to hold it in place rather than just using my hand. And I'll keep working my way down the page, shifting that stencil and turning it so that the cloud line is different on every line. And you get that darker blue right along the edge of the stencil and then it kind of fades up to the white at the bottom of the line above it.
So you can see how I'm trying to shift it around so that the bumps of the clouds are not in the same place and you get some nice movement with these clouds. And I decided that one at the top was a little bit lighter. That was the first one I did before I started using my magnets. So I was being much lighter handed with that because I didn't have my magnets to help. So I just darkened that one up a little bit. And then I am going to go in and darken up a little bit on the edges where that white is. And then at the bottom down there, I will just pull that blue up from the bottom so we don't have that stark white. I am going to cover up the bottom with a die cut piece of green cardstock for some grass, but I'm not sure how high up it's going to go. So I might as well just cover the whole thing in the blue clouds. Now I'm finding the center of my panel using my ruler and that centering measurement. And then I'm going to use my T-square to draw a straight line. And this is where I'm going to cut the little slot for my pull tab. So I'm using the Let's Toast Pull Tab add-on die set. And this is the die that cuts the little slot that the pull tab will go through. So I'm just lining it up with my pencil line that I drew and I can die cut that and you can see I have that little slit there. Now I'm using my T ruler to line up and draw a line at the top and this will show me where to line up the little notch to cut at the top. So the die that cuts the notch has this bar on it. You're going to line that up with the edge of the panel, not on the panel, but right above the edge. And you can see that I drew a line with my Sharpie marker so I can see to line up really easy with my grid mat. So there is the notch at the top. That will give you a place to grab hold of the pull tab when you pull it. And then for my pull tab, I'm gonna cut it from some vanilla malt card stock. So this is a nice thick card stock. I like that we have that cream color. You're gonna see that when you pull the tab. So it's just a little bit nicer than the bright white. Has a little bit of color. I'm folding it on the score line so you fold it in and then back again. And then you can slide it through the slot and then open up those two little flaps. I've also cut some of the little stabilizer pieces just from white cardstock. And I'm going to actually be putting two of these on here. I'm doing the first one up towards the top. This keeps the tab moving straight. It holds it in place so that it doesn't shift left or right. So I've got a little bit of adhesive on the back of it till I get it in place. And then I will wrap it around and put a little bit of adhesive on that little tab. And then I can wrap it around and enclose that pull tab in there. I'm adding my little skunk. I'm using some liquid glue. I'm making sure not to use too much so that it doesn't kind of squeeze out and get on my card and hinder things from moving. But this will make sure he's nice and stuck down to this tab. I've got it in the lowest position now and you can see he's going to slide up just like that. But when I started messing with it and pushed it down, my tab sort of bowed out a little bit at the bottom. So I'm just going to add another little stabilizer to the bottom to keep that from happening. Once it's on a card base, it probably won't do this very much, but I just felt like an added guide here would not be a bad idea. So again, I've done the same thing. I've put some adhesive on the back till I've got it lined up and then a little bit of adhesive on that tab and I can just fold it over and now it will stay nice and straight and tight to the back of the card. Now for the grass, I have a piece of cilantro cardstock. I'm going to cut it with that same stitched rectangle that I cut that background piece with the clouds. And then I'm trying to figure out how high up to cut the grass. So I've got my skunk kind of in his highest position. I wanna make sure he doesn't go past the grass. So that's sort of what I was doing there to figure out where to cut this grass. And I'll just hold that in place with a piece of tape. I'm kind of double checking it here, make sure it's high enough. And then I ran that through my die cut machine. And so he's going to slide down and kind of hide and his tail and his ears stick up and then he'll pop up and be at the top of my grass. So I got it cut in the right place. Now before I glue this down, I want to stamp my sentiment. So I'm using Popping Up to Say, which is from Let's Toast. And then I used Smitty's ABCs to finish off the sentiment that says, Have a Happy Day. 
So I've got all these spaced on my block. You could see there I had a piece of scrap paper that I was testing the spacing. I did have to kind of adjust it a little bit. I had my Smitty's ABCs too close the very first time. It all looked like one long word almost. And now that I've got it spaced correctly, I can stamp that down onto my green grass. And you can see I am missing some A's because I only have two A's in my Smitty set. So I can just take that A and just fill in where I'm missing them. I did use it when I was laying them on the block as a spacer and just moved it as I needed. So I know that the space that was left will fit that A perfectly. Now I can add my grass to my background. I wanna make sure I only have foam on the sides since he's going to slide down and hide behind the grass. So I've only put my foam squares on the left and the right side of the grass. That way there is a void in the center for my little skunk to hide. I just think that is so cute. I can trim my tab when he's in his start position, which is all the way down. So I'm trimming it off to line up with the top of the panel. And then I can add the little decorative piece that has the arrow to tell the recipient to pull the tab. So I've just cut this from some ballet slipper cardstock. I've also cut some little hearts from the Hearts and Stars skinny tag set. I've cut all these out of guava cardstock. I'm using all three sizes just to fill in in the sky and fill in a little bit. I kind of wish I had added some paint splatters <laughs> to the sky for some texture, but I didn't think about that till after the fact, and I don't want splatters on my little skunk and all the work I've already done, so I'll just save that idea for another card. And then I've added some foam adhesive to the back. I doubled it up so that I have a lot of space for that tab to move. And I'm making sure that it's only on the sides of the tab so that that tab can move in the middle. It kind of has a little channel to move in between all the foam adhesive. And then I'm going to add my glitter to my little hearts because I need some sparkle on this card. And then this card is all finished and I just think it is adorable with that little skunk hiding and then popping up from behind the grass. How cute is that? This card is beyond adorable, Shari. I love it so much. I love how he's peeking out from behind the grass. And then as you pull the tab, you can see him. So cute and so much fun. And next up, we have some adorable cards by the design team. And this little box by Elena is so cute and sweet. And and I love that she added a little extra detail by inlaying that black cardstock in his little stripe. This card by Mindy is so sweet. I love her ink blended background. It's so fun and such a fun mini slimline size. Here, I love that Megan created this awesome little goodie bag. It is absolutely adorable and I love him cut out of lighter colors of gray cardstock too. Here, Kara got super creative and she turned the skunk into a Yeti and you need to head on over to the blog to see how she did it because she has a little description and it is so clever and cool. And here, Maureen turned our skunk into a little duo of lions. How adorable is this card? I just love it and I love that you can get so creative with these dyes and we can't wait to see what you guys do with this skunk add-on so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!